Dan Azrieli. I'm the chair of the Azrieli Group, and it is a great pleasure to be here this morning at the CTBUH. Today, I will present what I consider to be the Azrieli Group's absolutely best project to date, the Azrieli Sorona Tower. But before I talk about the Azrieli Sorona Tower from the owner's perspective, I will take a brief moment to tell you a bit about the Azrieli Group's history, which I consider to be an essential part of our DNA and our constant striving to do better, to succeed, and to create quality. The company started by my father, who was born in Poland. At the outbreak of World War II, he ran away, and through a series of adventures, luck, determination, and a few kind people, he arrived in mandatory Palestine in the 1940s. In the 1950s, my father left Israel to try to find surviving family and to try to make a fortune and he ended up in Canada. After 20 years of operating a successful business in Canada in the 1980s, he took a calculated risk and invested $3 million in equity to build the first enclosed shopping mall in Israel. It's hard to believe, but in the 1980s, there was still not an enclosed shopping mall in Israel. From the money from the first mall, which was successful, he built a second and then a third. And today we have 17 shopping malls in Israel 13 office buildings, and we recently entered the senior housing sector where we have two operating houses and three under construction. We are the eighth largest company on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange with a market cap of six and a half billion dollars. But even in the 1980s, with that very first mall, what differentiated us was our ability to recognize those still undiscovered locations. Our first mall was built in an area that was a garbage dump but we're always looking for infrastructure, highways, four-way intersections, accessibility, and public transportation. In fact, the area where our Azrieli Sorona Tower is built, which is today the center of the commercial business district of Tel Aviv, was not always that way. In the 1990s, when we built the Azrieli Center, a building comprised of simple geometric forms of a circle, a triangle, and a square, it was in an area that was a truck stop and a parking lot. The original commercial business district of Tel Aviv was located closer to the sea, where the architectural style was the Bauhaus, and also known as the White City, which UNESCO has declared a World Heritage Site. But with the advent of modern highways and public transportation lines, we understood that the commercial business district was shifting northeast, and in fact, it was our Azrieli Center that was the catalyst for this transformation. So, in 2011, we competed for the tender on the Sorona site. We knew that the locations, proximity to the north-south highways, accessibility to the major north-south-east-west intersections, the proximity to public transportation, buses, and major rail lines, and the potential to build to height with panoramic views overlooking the White City toward the Mediterranean Sea was a must-have location. One of the exciting features of the Sorona location is that it sits on a park that was built in the late 1800s by a German colony known as the Templars. The architecture there is European in nature with red tile roofs and two-story stone buildings. Today, the area has been revitalized and the historic buildings in the park are used for offices and retail. And so we won the tender, and we understood that we wanted to build something innovative, a building that would symbolize the high-tech industry of Israel, that would be a juxtaposition to this historic Templar Park. We also know that imagination is the secret sauce to development, and we started imagining a building that would emphasize the contrast between the old and the new, the ancient and the modern, a contrast that so aptly describes Israel today. And so we turned to Professor Moshe Tzur and his team. And Moshe came up with the idea of a single building that would be 125,000 meters, a building which would be 1.3 million square feet, a building with a twist, a building where each floor would turn half a degree, literally making the building move. The building dances. And so, the height originally of this building was only limited to 180 meters above sea level. 
but we felt that the proportions needed to be higher to create a slimmer look and feel to the building. And with the amazing work of my team at the Azrieli Group, we succeeded in raising the height to 255 meters above sea level, which is today the tallest building in Israel. And then came the idea of the double skin. The objective rationale for doing a double skin is that Israel is a hot climate, a double skin keeps the cold in and keeps the heat out, and it helped us pursue our goals to be environmentally friendly. The emotional rationale for doing a double skin and making such a decision is that the double skin would further emphasize the building's movement. By creating a space between the inner and outer layers, the facade literally takes on a depth that exponentially and dramatically affects how the building looks. Moshe and I spent hours talking about this layering. Should it be straight? Should it be slanted? Should it be white? Should it be black? And then came the great idea of the parallelogram. Moshe will talk about this in a moment. Before I hand over the mic, I just want to say a few words about the market. Because a building needs tenants, we need somebody to pay the rent. So we understood the market demand in the area was for international tenants, and that demand, the demand would come from Israel's booming technology and high-tech industry. Our clients are young, they're hip, they bring their dogs to work, they ride their bikes, they wear jeans, and they're generally very cool. At the time, the traditional floor plate in Israel, since it's still a developing country, was only 1,500 square meters. So we knew we needed a bigger floor plate to address the demand, and we brought it up to 2,500 square meters. It was the first tower in Israel to have such a large floor plate. In addition, we understood that we needed to create connections between the floors and ability to put inner staircases so these large technology companies and international companies could create a building within a building, an intimacy, an independence, and yet still get all the benefits and the services of the building as a whole. In fact, an interesting note is that we expected well over 100 tenants in the building, and today we're 98% leased and have only 20 tenants, each with multiple floors. And finally, today's most important concept is flexibility. People want open space, people want closed space. You need to create flexibility. So we minimized the columns as much as we could to create as much flexibility as possible. And last but not least, our lobby. We knew that the lobby needed to be simple and clean lined, so we chose to use only three materials, gray slate stone, white glass illuminated from behind, and bamboo. An important feature is that we brought the movement of the building inside by creating a slanting wall. So when you come in from seeing the building move, you actually also feel it as you enter into the lobby. And finally, the entrance has an indoor-outdoor water feature. And I commissioned a breathtaking sculpture by Chihuly. And he, it's made from an old fisherman's boat with colorful glass balls of all different sizes, which creates color and vitality to those that enter and those that exit. And now I hand the mic over to my esteemed colleague, Moshe Tzor. Thank you, Dana. Our challenge to design this uh, over 1.3 square feet prime located project with unique architectural achievement, which will represent the values of the vibrant and dynamic character of the city of Tel Aviv and its historical heritage of the UNESCO declared uh, Bauhaus uh, area, and also to represent the values of uh, uh, the uh, Israeli group's values for persistence for uh, excellence. So how we design a volume of uh, such huge mass in the middle of the center of Tel Aviv? We, first of all, we split it into two uh, trapezoid volumes. The second one, we just shifted them one from the other. And then we rotated them, each one, in, around a different uh, center of rotation, thus creating two volumes, dancing one with the other. So our decision to locate the center of rotation outside the mass of the volume rotating create instead of just a twisted uh, volume, a volume which sweeps in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the space, dancing in the free movement, 
and both are dancing one in front of the other, creating this, uh, what we think it's unusual, uh, three-dimensional recreation. Creation. So the, uh, the central core of this all, uh, all concrete building is vertical. The typical floor are rotated around the core. The structural columns follow the edge of the typical floor and dance together with uh, the edge of the building. We've tested in the RWDI uh, tun uh, wind tunnel test and also CFD. It turns out this special geometry of the rotated twisted turn turned out to be extremely efficient concerning uh, wind load and turbulences. So we get some uh, unusual building above the skyline of Tel Aviv very visible from everywhere and a different appearance. And when we look at the skyline from this, you can see on your right the existing Azvieli three towers, which up to this project have been the icon of Tel Aviv. We've taken the architectural language of the facade of the existing Azvieli as an inspiration for our uh, multi-layer facade solution. So it's based on rectangular aluminum white frames. And then we stagger them in order to take the, the twisted shape of the facade. In front of it, after the cavity, we located the parallelogram, a, a perfect glass plane, twisted, defined by the black structural silicon which joins all the glasses. And so actually, I'd say it again because it's important, the background is a concept of Azrieli. The exterior is a cutting edge, state of the art technology of the new solution. The juxtaposition between the both creates a drama of the facade design. But we have taken very carefully uh, uh, designing the proportion in order to conceal the diagonal lines from the inside to get an undisturbed free view from the uh, typical floors. He, and he, here I'm explaining a group of my students about the qualities of this building. And the shading is inside the cavity between the two layers. And, uh, and the inside, there are openable doors in order to, to get easy, uh, very easy maintenance of the system. This special double skin system we have developed especially for the Tel Aviv hot climate, unlike uh, systems which are designed for cold climate. It's also very cost effective because we carefully designed the geometry that is only one module of one glass, one glass on all the building. And the, uh, we get with one glass flat, coming flat, and then it's cold form to its uh, 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 final position while mounting it. And this double skin system we have developed save over 27% of uh, energy compared to ashray baseline, and uh, it's, uh, it's a lead gold. But even not less important, even more, these white rectangular, uh, uh, white rectangular frames relate to the heritage of the white city uh, of Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is declared the UNESCO, its historic park, uh, UNESCO declared Bauhaus buildings, and this white appearance relates itself to it. So actually the design, at the same time, is a cutting edge, a state-of-the-art appearance, but also relates to Tel Aviv white city heritage. We have developed a special glass for the exterior skin, which is highly reflective by hard coating on a, on a, a ultra clear glass, which gives it at the same time transparency and reflectance. So the building is, the appearance is a bit elusive. Sometimes it's glass building, sometimes it's a white building, sometimes it's reflective, sometimes it's uh, 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 showing the inside and very transparent. As, as I've said, the drama between the two layers looking different from each way you're looking it and which time of the day actually is a unique quality of this facade treatment. It changes constantly in the day, hour of the day, at the, at the date, and uh, also the hour. The delicate balance between the both, the, the delicate balance between the transparency and the reflectance is what gives it its uh, very uh, unique quality and in different light condition it looks different. When we rotated the building, we uh, opened the bigger gap from the adjacent building, but even more important, we uh, directed the typical floor to the sea view, 
which is very valuable for the tenant's quality of uh, life and of course for the economical value of the building. This uh, orthogonal grid of the uh, adjacent uh, Sarona Park was the base for starting building the building. So the building, uh, the building starts being aligned to Sarona Park orthogonal grid. But as it rises up, it sets itself free with the free movement away from uh, the grid. And it looks different from every side you look at it, and you see that the uh, romantic and cozy, friendly amb uh, uh, ambience of Sarona historic building is just uh, enriches the whole environment of the, of the project, creating a much more complex and much more interesting uh, 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 neighborhood. More important, we, we uh, provided through the three commercial floor a, a pedestrian pass, very easy, which connects Sarona Park to the very busy Menachem Begin uh, Street, one of the busiest streets in the CBD. And uh, we enter in two piazzas, the shopping mall, the one and two. The other one is also entrance to the, to the uh, building itself. You've seen it in Danas. And not less important, we used the base of the three stories to get the same, uh, uh, the, the same proportion as the Sarona Park. And on top of it, we provided a very uh, uh, peaceful space for the high-tech workers overlooking the Sarona Park. So the building is uh, just looking from everywhere different, reflecting uh, uh, every, even, even part of it reflecting every, uh, uh, differently, reflect, looks differently from the city, and uh, it's very loved by the people in the Instagram. People are competing with uh, uh, sharing uh, pictures of it. The mayor of Tel Aviv de defined it as a new icon of Tel Aviv. But I have to say, we've put intensive design efforts in order to gain an effortless appearance and a dreamy appearance and to maintain over the skyline of Tel Aviv this uh, uh, new project uh, as its quality. Thank you.